Read you five by five. Very well. Hope you're well. Well, thank you. It's the first time I've ever got this Discord working. I'm sitting on the runway at the other end from you guys in the stick. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see you. Is that Hello, Jimsy? everyone. How are you doing? It is, yeah. I had him heading down. I've just been to the ice cream van, don't worry. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> welcome, Did welcome. Did you get me, everybody? Wobbling my way down. <laughs> Hello everyone, can That's you hear me? Way to do it. Loud and clear. Excellent, excellent. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me just get this uh, stream sorted out. Cool, we've got a great collection. There's lots of people uh, lots of people joining. Hey, how's it going, Samaya? All good, thanks. <laughs> good, good. I'm, uh, I'm going to be in the Spitfire today, so... Excellent. Nobody, no, nobody watch the takeoffs. <laughs> <laughs> There's bound to be some uh, some interesting stuff going on today because we're a lot faster than we normally am. <laughs> we don't normally are. In that case, there's two bad Spitfires. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is in the Spit? Tunesy. Oh, yes, there you are. I see. Spit. Oh. Are you in the Flying Irons, Mark 9? Yep, yep, yep. Let me just try and find your tag. Where are you? I'm on the other yeah, side. Okay, of the yeah. Runway. You're just behind the. Just behind the um, DMBOF. I see you. Excellent. Right. I think we've got everyone, haven't we? Wow. What a collection. Look at that. Fantastic. Some powerful okay. aircraft here. Good stuff. So we're going to be trying to cruise around about between 180 to 200 knots today, just to. Uh, to keep things moving uh, as it's a relatively long route but it's a uh, a route all about women in aviation and about some of their early ex exploits and, and activities in uh, in aviation so there's a few fun facts and a couple of challenges along the way as well cool so as it's uh, six o'clock on the dock if everyone's ready we can we can take off and head down the coast towards um shoreham airport for our first our first stop there So you all know, Sim Hang is the one with the night fighter stripes on. Nice. <laughs> right. Draw the attention to so. Breaks off and here we go. Okay, let's see. Normally it takes a, a couple of seconds just to uh, get everything sorted, doesn't it? It's going to be a nice sunrise. Yeah. Absolutely. Ah, that's why it's because of my profile. So I was too busy setting up the uh, 
setting up the stream and everything to realise I still had it on the old control profile. Here we go, back in. Much better. So just coming over Portsmouth now. How's everyone getting on? I've just about managed yeah, to keep my under control now. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of cruising height would you like to say, James? Uh, around about a thousand, just something so that you can appreciate the ground and, and see some of the sights and uh, and still have a little bit of a margin for error. <laughs> I'm not allowed to fly that low. I use up too much data according to the wife. Oh, I see. <laughs> Maybe better at no, 3,000 then. Can just yeah. hover above us. <laughs> One of the reasons not to have a wife. Oh, she's, she's not on the computer, that's right. <laughs> wow, the scenery at this time of day is wonderful. Mm, it's a nice sunrise. Oh, I should bring out the <coughs> UK upgrade for the Xbox. Machinery. Oh yeah, is it not out for Xbox? I don't think it is. I'm sure uh, Hudson said that it was still only on for PC at the minute. Oh right, okay. Because yeah, some of the landmarks on the yeah, expansion packs and everything are pretty spectacular, aren't they? Really? I mean, it's quite a few people had the Australia pack um, a couple of weeks ago, didn't they? Which looked awesome. I didn't. Yeah, they did. A, they did an awesome job with Australia, I must say, particularly the photogrammetry. It's a lot better than than many of the other places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the picture is still ugly. I'm still keen to uh, download the the Orbix pack as well because um, there's a still a couple of little bits that were missing on mine, like the um, Sydney Harbour Bridge. So the uh, the reason what we started off, uh, on yours. it was yeah, it wouldn't wouldn't load in for some reason. I'm not sure if it was that, that was to do with the the package or or the update yeah. or something. Yeah. But uh, well, it should have because it's part of the update. Um, mm -hmm. what, just check your terrain level of detail. Yeah, that, it'll probably be something to do with my settings. So the airport that uh, or the the disused airfield that uh, some of you are flying over now, um, I believe is actually one of the ones that, that uh, Amelia Earhart would have flown over. She would have flown over this, this sort of region and landed somewhere in between um, Leon Solent and, and Southampton Airport. So it was slightly further out towards, if we took off towards the sea, it was slightly to the right. I believe these are the sort of fields that she would be um, considering landing at um, in her transatlantic voyage. So there's your first fun fact. I've got my speed down at about 160-ish at the moment, just so that people can, can catch me up, because I realised I was a little bit fast out the, out the gate. Just above you, Chunzi. <laughs> I got a ho ho ho. You're, is your gear up? Because I can see it now. No, it is up. Oh, okay. Just a model issue. Oh man. Warbirds away. 
<laughs> well, James, I hope you know where you're going because I've got no uh, no autopilot or GPS. In this oh gosh, thing. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the old birds will have uh, pretty limited stuff, won't they? Are you all on steam okay. gauges. So I'm following you. <laughs> that's okay. Follow the crowd, and I I'm sure we'll all make it. Well, we'll all make it to France, that's for certain. It's just uh, where in France we end up. <laughs> so the um, the the reason for um, short room is um, let me have a quick look here. Pulling up my my facts. Pauline Gower. So she was the um, she was a British pilot. Uh, who established the women's branch of the Air Transport Auxiliary in the Second World War. So she would have um, been organising a lot of the flights that were taken from the south coast here, um, delivering things like, or to, to here rather, delivering things like Spitfires and, and, uh, and, and a lot of other larger aircraft as well. So this is, this is partly her leg as well, pulling, that's Pauline Gower from the RAF. Enjoying yourself, Mark. I'm having a whale of a time. I can see. <laughs> <laughs> He's flying it like you stole it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just uh, just circling. Uh, let people catch up a little bit. Okay, yeah, we'll believe that. Because yeah. you wouldn't let me dive bomb you, so I thought I'd pick on somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone got a uh, B-51 or oh, I can see a B-38 yeah. there? Oh god, yeah, I'll get yeah, you. I think Striker is in a P-38. Nice. Yeah, what do you see, a Boeing or...? What? Yeah, some, some kind of uh, airliner. No, no don't you crash, don't you crash. I've got too bad for you, hot on my heels at the moment. He's uh, he's doing well actually, keeping on formation behind me. There's a sneak peek actually at one of the challenges. As soon as we uh, start the uh, <clears throat> start the cross channel leg, we're going to try and get into a massive V formation. <laughs> uh, we 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 tried that uh, over Christmas. Um, <laughs> How uh, well did it, it go? Was, uh, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've got but some. I, I, I think we, I think we covered just about every uh, letter in the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of W's going on. <laughs> nice. It's nice. Started at Christmas and finished the New Year. <laughs> yeah, we did a flight in Scotland. Uh, everybody in Spitfires. It, it, oh, well, wow. Most people in Spitfires. It was amazing. I bet that was pretty spectacular, actually, especially over the some of the lakes you can, all the locks you can get there. Yeah, we started um, um, south of Loch Ness and then flew out from the mainland to some of the islands. James, you're yeah. in your TBM again, are you? I am indeed. Sorry, I just had myself muted there. I was chatting away to myself. Uh, yeah, I'm in the TBM. That must have been spectacular, though, seeing all the, the scenery in Scotland. Yeah, it was amazing. Absolutely. I, th I thought I'd give myself a little bit of uh, power, <coughs> power margin here. But uh, as we're approaching um, Shoreham now, I'm just going to dial back the speed a little bit. Because we're getting quite close. Full stop? Uh, yeah, full stop at Shoreham. Okay. <coughs> I'll catch up, I had to reset my thing because my plane controls were not working, so I'm a wee bit behind. Coming in runway inland. Right. Which way are we landing, James? From from the sea or other side? Uh, from the sea, let's go from the sea and then we can turn around and then 
head off in the uh, in the right right direction for the for the coast. <laughs> so yeah, land from the sea, and then take off towards the sea as well. How's your landings, Tunesy? You were about to see better than my takeoffs, to be honest. It's just slowing, stopping is the issue with this, and the rudders are very, very sensitive. Have you guys got the uh, the tail wheel lock or anything like that on? Are you using that for? No, I haven't had that yet. No, I don't think there is one. Ah, that'd be why. <laughs> very sensitive rudder. Mm. It's difficult with this sun to know where uh, where the ocean sits, doesn't it? You can't get a, uh, a very good height sense. Oh, no, far too low now. Well, that's the best landing I've ever done in this one, um, Mark, so challenge <laughs> yeah that's the best one I've done oh look at that lovely don't you too there's a p38 just coming off the end of the runway yeah I seem to have lost all flat oh just well it's actually a Triple seven in it to me, but it's, I think it's a P thirty eight. Yeah, it's a P thirty eight that doesn't have any working flaps for some reason. Ah, uh -huh. it's a bit of land. Well, that is the plan to land. After wow. watching a fantastic mosquito documentary on YouTube early on, I really want a mosquito now. <laughs> They were a uh, Second World War, weren't they? Yeah, wooden. Wooden? Wooden, wooden wow. aircraft. Because there was the, the um, I might be thinking of the wrong one, but wasn't there a twin engine? That was it, yeah. That was it, yeah, much, yeah. A little bit like the P-38, but not with a twin boom tail. Nice. Standard tail and a twin engine. Two, two, two Merlin engines in, so the fastest, basically oh. the fastest aircraft of a very long time. Um, yeah, wooden, made out of um, plywood uh, with a doped coating on. And yeah, an amazing documentary on that. And I've got the Mosquito Museum about five miles away from me. <laughs> cool, cool. Amazing place. There's a friend of mine so who's so uh, that's his favourite aircraft. Ended, yeah? Yes, I think so. I think there's a couple still more still on approach. Yeah. No, I'm I'm still landing. I'm just worrying how many people are going to see this disaster. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the drone. Every yeah. one of us. Uh, I'm just going to start recording now. <laughs> I've got the drone out watching. Don't worry. It's no, no pressure. <laughs> At least it looks like there's a few very stable approaches going on actually. Very nice. I landed short, but I made it. <laughs> Everybody's in the air for me, six, ten feet above. Oh, maybe because I've got scenery. I've got the Shoreham add on pack. Ah. Uh -huh. That's Woo, what it is. I'm down. Beautiful. I don't have the uh, the, the models or the textures for the, the aircraft, so it looks like it's a, um, a bonanza dragging its tail along the runway at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, so if everyone taxis to the end of the runway, we'll uh, we'll go off runway two zero for this one. Ah, just seeing. James is doing the Red Palmer. He's using the drone. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm in the drone at the moment. <laughs> I 
Jesus, now can I get the take off? Okay. If everyone's ready, let's go full power. Fucking break off. Ah, oh, close the canopy. Okay. That's why it's so loud. That's <laughs> that's something you don't really have to deal with in a modern aircraft, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I had the canopy open for the whole journey. He was flyer bombing us, that's what he was doing. It was because of Mark, he was so close, I was just ready to bail. <laughs> I'm surprised I haven't heard guns, guns, guns yet. <laughs> I need some airspeed first, James. I don't know why my autopilot's taking me this way, but I'm... Um, let me go back. So it's uh, left turn, after, after departure, left turn, and then straight across the channel. On a, I'll give you a rough heading so that the, uh, the old warbud guys can, <laughs> can follow along as well. Yeah. It's around about... Uh, one zero five. Yeah. I saw someone pressing the skew button. Ah. <laughs> yeah, that was me. I hit the wrong button and took myself out of VR. Oh, and no. the screen goes the screen goes blank for a, for about 30 seconds flying instructor would be having a fit if you could see the uh, quality of my flying at the moment. <laughs> um, a little question for people in the group. Does anybody know how to get rid of the air traffic zones on the VFR map? The airspace sure. zones, they, they come up as standard now and I don't seem to get rid of them. Have you got the uh, NXI? Uh, no, no, this oh, is just, just the VR file map that we bring up, the standard oh, right. file map, because it's um, the spit. No, um, I, I, I don't think you've got any option on that map. Uh, they've, they've just defaulted it. It's fine, it's okay. It's not too often. Probably turn it off anyway and just go old school. Yeah. It's more fun. Where Absolutely. There, uh, I'm doing 160, but uh, that's just to let people catch up at the moment, so I'm aiming for about 180 to 200. Work. I don't think we've lost anyone yet, which is uh, great news. I <laughs> <laughs> see. So, yeah, we're um, we're following the coast a little bit for this this leg until we get to um, Seaford, I believe. I'm just going to have a double check of the map just to make sure. 
Yep, it's Seafoot. That's Brighton Marina we've just passed, yeah. That's the one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Seafoot. Yeah, uh, you might be able to tune up the Seafoot VOR. Actually, or VOR did me <laughs> if you're in an older aircraft. <laughs> If not, just look for the headland and, and go straight in over the water once you hit the headland. Pressing buttons and locating text stuff is far too difficult in <laughs> VR. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, that's it must be spectacular in VR. Are you in the spit in VR? I am, yeah, and it's oh, good. Nice. I'm sure it's even better with Mark because he's got a slightly clearer headset with the new version. No, it's absolutely amazing. What's up with Oculus? I'm with the uh, reverb. Chunzi, what are you in? You're just about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright, you had a, a, you had a, a, a paper bag hanging off your undercarriage tire. Just grab that. Is my gear still down? It is, yeah. Your gear is up. It must have something to do with the liveries, it has to be. Um, this is amazing in this bit. It's, it's lovely. So South Coast Cliffs, isn't it? Sort of. Near, Nearby-ish, within about half an hour, probably. That guy's gone at the sea. Oh, that has to be close. Oh, that's about 50 feet. Got <laughs> the way Oh wow! <laughs> Did not be on fire. Just in a uh, <laughs> buzz the tower, but <laughs> on me instead of the tower. Well, I'm afraid you are a target. Yeah. I... I managed to catch the um, the last pass you did in in the cub on the on the last one. So that that made it to the highlights video. <laughs> That's all that. A little bit of inverted mark, awesome. <laughs> yeah, I just did a loop, I nearly lost it though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So, let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can start this full battle full battle of uh, Britain mode <laughs> so we're, let's try and get in, ourselves into a, um, a massive flying V formation that's the first challenge so I'm, I'm at, at the very front at the moment so 
if you if you're looking for me, that's where I am. What speed now, are you um, doing, James? I'll drop it down to about 160, so that so that people can catch up. Um, yeah, if you're in a slightly slow air aircraft, hit full power and uh, and get yourself into the formation. Is uh, is 160 good enough for everybody? Is that does that work? That's yeah, yeah, or is it that's a bit about quick? as slow as I'd like to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I'm dead on a thousand feet at the moment. It's a real tough one because you don't want too much overtake, do you? I've just seen Frank Ale peel off from the uh, from the group and break away. That looked cool. You have autopilot, Mark, because it's down on a little tablet by our left, left leg. Yeah, we do. I don't like to use it though. Uh, it's cheap. <laughs> yeah. Is there an iPad in the uh, in, in the Spitfire? <laughs> there is, yeah. It's <laughs> down by your leg. I've only just remembered. Well, it's got a basic autopilot, it'll do a, hop, it'll do a heading and altitude to hold. Still yeah. step down. But... Have you guys found the Spitfire with um, the software update 8? No more problem to control. Oh, really? Really? It's good. still just as difficult on the ground anyway. Right, right. Yeah. Because I heard some people were having problems with it uh, not working or something. Or not working properly. But it seems to work just as well. Very good. Oh, but good. Um, it's just the difficulty on the ground is, is just so sensitive to tail. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's down to a sobo. Their ground handling isn't the best. Does it help to have um, pedals, do you think? Uh, yeah. Pedals. I'm not much sure. I actually think with the velocity, I think the triggers would probably be easier for me because uh, okay. the, the pedals are a little difficult to do very sen in a sensitive way. You know, you need to, they sort of move and don't move, and I've got some thrust masters. Yeah, yeah. They tend to, they're not on. Um, Hydraulics or anything, so it's difficult to get them to move accurately. How's RV coming along? It's getting there, actually. Yeah, we've, we've got. We've got. I can't see who it is. I think it might be Wombleway. 
who's right behind yeah, me. Right behind you. Yeah. yeah We've got Do Not I'm, Be On Fire I'm on just, the... I'm just off the flank of Womble Way. I'm nice. coming in on your yeah. 7 o'clock. We're actually getting there. We're, we're, <laughs> this is working. <laughs> So we've got Tunesy in, we've got Sim Hanger, we've got Womble Way, we've got Do Not Be On Fire. Although, on mine, um, <laughs> you're appearing as a, a 777. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Which is quite funny, yeah. <laughs> everyone's, uh, everyone's doing pretty well, though, actually. It's how, spectacular. How do you model, how, how do you model match a P38 and an airline? <laughs> So the famous um, woman in aviation that goes along with this leg would be um, Harriet Quimby. She's a uh, an American pioneering aviator, um, and she did the first channel crossing on April the 16th, 1912. So she took off from Dover and went to... Um, uh, she flew to a beach right next to uh, Equienne La Plage, which is effectively the 2K airport now. I've run out of fuel. Oh, God. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Mexico. Where's that toolbar in VR? Oh. <laughs> uh, I've got mine that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going for a swim. Oh, no. <laughs> you can see you descending, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> the good news is you're on North Park. Well, in the best terms of all the best uh, adventures and, and buddy adventures, see you later. <laughs> I made it. Just. <laughs> close call, close there. call. You are just trying to um, outfly the Jerry's, weren't you? You were trying to keep everyone off your tail. <laughs> Can you imagine flying this for real in a wooden aircraft, though? I mean, <laughs> it's better with two engines than one, but still, wow. <laughs> yeah, amazing aircraft. Extremely good documentary. I mean, there was a the day after VE Day, with a couple of British pilots headed off from. Oh, I can't remember what it was. Um, it was an airport in. Northampton somewhere, it might have been Poddington or something similar, and they headed over to Canada, to Calgary, uh, Quebec. Oh, nice. Um, for demonstration flights and just promotional flights, and they got there the day after VE Day, and um, they were doing low-level passes to the, to the guys in the Canadian Air Force bases, and on the third pass they hit uh, a steel pole of oh, the tower. No. And straight through the wing and killed both the pilot and the co-pilot. Wow. Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. Uh, after, quite, after getting it all the way there as well, that's... Uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Such it, a it sudden... one of the... Uh, it was combat aircraft too. I've actually seen combat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just seen that aircraft right Forget it's with the B38. When you're flying it by yourself, it just roughs along effortlessly. But trying to fly in formation, it's really hard. <laughs> it's just—it's either quick or it's falling out of the sky. Shall we? Um... Oh, I just saw that King Air break. <laughs> I'm going to get a, a, a shot now of if everybody who's right, in the so formation good. does a break okay. at the same time. It's going to look spectacular. So, on three, ready? One, two, three, break. Nice. <laughs> really cool. I'll reduce my airspeed down so everyone can come and rejoin. 
<laughs> that looks awesome, guys. Just got to make sure I don't stall it now. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Have to pass you. Try and do some formation on my own, I think. Now we haven't really got long actually before we uh, end up at La Plage. Tunzi, uh, right behind you, got you in my sights. Break, break, break. Lost you. Nice. Look on your six o'clock, mate. Whoops! <laughs> the old switcheroo. To you, Tommy's the war is over. Yeah. 
be lovely if they modelled an F109 nicely. Lovely if they added something into the code of the of the actual sim, but even if you don't get to fly the aircraft you purchased, you still see that aircraft in the sim. Yeah, yeah. massive sales tool, you know. Yeah, I mean model matching, it should be a case yeah. of you can well not necessarily that you automatically get it, but you should be able to download like a a model file, yeah. Yeah, a model file which allows you to see. Yeah, I think so. Or even just like a standard pack up of the most common ones. Well, yeah, that'd yeah. be nice. Or, or even at least have it the same size as the aircraft that you're actually flying. <laughs> yeah. That's I'd true. love to be able to see that B38. Yeah, I'm just tempted to buy it so I see it as an aircraft. Well, that's the whole point, isn't it? If you see that buzzer down the sky, you, you know, you see glitches, you'd, you'd, yep. you'd be like, actually, I'd I like quite that. fancy that. Yeah. Yep. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the Spitfire, but if I'm going anywhere, long distance, uh, P-38. When you're saying that, I took the Spitfire all the way around the world, so... That's wow, cool. I bet that took a while. Wow. We uh, redid um, Gertie's flight, you know, the Silver Spitfire flight. Around the world. It was uh, hard work. Yeah, I've seen that. No autopilot at the time, no real nav aids, it's a lot of dead reckoning, reckoning in real bad weather. Was it all in, um, in the, like, the, with the live weather on then? Yeah, live weather, well, I, some people would, you know, use, like, little nav map to help them, and other people would use no aids at all, and fly live weather and everything. Mm. Took, took me three attempts to get to the Pharaohs. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> okay, so the airport um, Lima Foxtrot Alpha Tango is right next to the uh, inlet just here where the water is. Just on the right hand side. I'm following you in, James. Dare I check behind me? <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Nice. Oh, I'm in the water. I just had a, uh, a 777 drift into me. <laughs> well, I just had a TVM drive through my tail. So. <laughs> oh, that was a great landing. Now, if only I could see where I was going. That's butter. <laughs> yeah, one good landing for me too. Yeah, someone's a lucky charm in here. Nice work, guys. Somehow oh, I crashed that plane. Oh no. <laughs> Not quite the lands that I was aiming for. Was it near the runway? <laughs> I just went in the sea before it. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I put, scrubbed off far too much speed and I was like, I can't do anything about this now. 
It's when you get behind the drag car, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you put the wrong ICAO in. I think you put in E-A-R-T-H. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> Let me double check where we're going after this one because, um, yeah, we're heading pretty much 170 ish track after this, uh, after this next takeoff. I must say, some nice landings. Mm. I was very kind of you to say so, uh, some hanger. As he goes bouncing off, off the end of the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> it's all relative, it's all relative. <laughs> Hey, Chunzi, check yeah. your fuel. Don't get caught like I did. Um, I've got the, I've got the, a special device. It's called Cheat. Ah, <laughs> uh, you've got auto fuel on. Oh, auto fuel, yeah. <laughs> this spit but is I did, quite. I did quite thirsty, you know. I did top it up um, about halfway through. And oh, am I on auto fuel? One second. What are no, I'm not on auto fuel. So I am down to 13 litres. Yeah, I think up to 50 litres. Nope. Yeah, I topped up, but I also put fuel in my external tank. Normally it loads up with fuel in the external tank, but this time it didn't. How's everyone doing? Are we all um, pretty much ready? All set. Ready to go. Nice. Okay. Full power. So yeah, around about, uh, for the old Warbird guys, it's uh, around about 170. But I'm sure there's, there's plenty of other aircraft you can be following as well. The 2K, home of the January February beach races, motorcycle beach races. Oh, really? Yeah, Did not know that. Year. Yeah, they do a big, um, like a three mile, two and a half mile length course down the beach. Wow. <laughs> and you can usually expect about two and a half to three thousand bikes there. Oh. I've heard of people popping there for for a quick lunch on my. <laughs> On yeah, the bike, yeah, I've done that on the bike a couple of times, yeah, nice. for the day. It's a good, it's all right, it's, it's doable in a day trip. Wow. Well, so do you get the, um, the ferry across and then ferry back again? Yep, and then nice. head down and across to where you want to go. That's cool. Um, so it does help. If the leader of the group with his thousand pound BMW sat nav doesn't take you through the same town three times. <laughs> <laughs> it's, All the it's gear. Really I think it was 15 to 18 riders on this group and we went through the same town centre three times and the locals sitting outside the, the bars were just 
<laughs> I bet they were Doing threaders. The, the crazy signs, you know? The loop loop de loop signs. Crazy English fools. <laughs> <laughs> and this was on the way back to the ferry. Oh wow. Well. time. Darlan, you would get me a beer, please. And me. Yeah, I'll have one, yeah. two, thanks. <laughs> I'll take one. Yeah, I'll take one. <laughs> I can't believe this yoke doesn't have a cup holder. <laughs> You might be able to 3D print one. <laughs> yeah. Well, seeing some of the prints that people have been doing already, yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed. Same, actually. I was thinking about getting myself a 3D printer just for that, just for that purpose, just to trial out some new, new things. Well, for the Spitfire, you got the authenticate um, equipment, which is 3D printed. I've got uh, nearly a whole cockpit now. It's wow. fantastic. Video on that, please, soon. Yeah. <laughs> I've done a number of vids on that. Oh, nice. I thought it was. It's a company called Authenticate. They give the designs free. They give you a contact where you can buy all the little bits and pieces and some of the pre-printed parts if you don't have a 3D printer. Wow. And you just assemble it all at home? Yeah, and assemble it at home. And uh, I've got the... Um, I've got the yoke. Um, for the Spitfire, uh, with the brake and everything. Wow. I've, I've got the throttle quadrant, which includes prop mixture, etc. I've Does got the elevator and rudder trim, so far. Nice. Does what it have the uh, little fire button on there? Yeah, it does. <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool. You should put some pictures in there. Yeah, Discord. Okay. I think that's the only improvement to the Turtle Beach that I think I would like. And that would be the, the throttle quadrant on the other side to be able to move them either side of the joystick yoke. And the version 2, that would be lovely, left or right. I would say we should be able to do that now, to be fair. Um, it doesn't have a separate clamp though, does it? There's no separate clamp. Oh, there. no, I see. I see what you mean, yeah. yeah. It, on the right-hand side, it's obviously got the circular boss that you clip it into. Yes. And one on the left would be fantastic. Right, okay. Yeah, sure. And okay. Definitely worth bearing in mind. Uh, top tip: if you've got the pylons and cables mod, bear in mind there are pylons and cables. <laughs> yeah, we're just going over a wind farm, I think now. There's a there's a good mod that puts the cables between all the pylons, and they they have collisions. Oh yes, cable. I've got that, yeah. I must have I forgot that. Yeah, I completely forgot I had it. I've been flying over Africa and Middle East the last few weeks. I completely forgot. I thought, oh, I can fly right through these. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's the yeah. best uh, Turtle Beach headset for the Xbox? Say again, sorry, then. The best Turtle Beach headset for the Xbox. Series X. I'd probably like say something like the... The um, Recon 500. I don't know. What, what do people think? What? Yeah, the five or six. Yeah, yeah. I, re I really like the Recon actually. Yeah, I've never really been into headsets before, but yeah. I mean, obviously, obviously, James posted me one for free. Oh. Yeah, but yeah, maybe, I'm not, I maybe what you're lacking, it. what you're lacking, is a a good review of a headset. I've got the Steel Series X9s at the minute, but I have big issues. Like all the way through this flight, I've had to switch it off and switch it on all the time because it disconnects through the Xbox all the time. Oh really? I've had it for a while. Yeah, I've had it for a while. They've got the issue Microsoft are meant to be looking into it, but they don't seem to do anything about it. And it just disconnects all the time. That's strange because so, the Series Seven's very good. Yeah. Like, say, this one was meant to be good, but they just there must be a software issue because everybody complains about it and nothing seems to get done about it. So, I've been looking at getting a new headset. So, well, I must say I'll that have a look at that well, Recon yeah. ones. You definitely come to the, the right um, place for headsets, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. I've got the Xbox um, wireless set, and I must say it's very, very good to be fair. 
They've just brought out a um, couple of new ones as well, the uh, Stealth 600s. Yeah, I'll have a look because this is just pisses me off. <laughs> it depends if you want, you know, wired or, or wireless or the, the kind yeah. of thing that you're after, really. Because um, there's a range of, of different ones that we offer. Yeah, yeah proper I think, wireless. I think for, for VR, you need wireless. Oh, are you in yeah, VR? Yeah. Wireless. Mm. Although, I mean, today, for example, uh, I'm using the mic that's built into the HP Reverb headset, which is the first time I've been able to use a mic on a headset. It yeah, is I, good. I, it sounds I, awesome. I looked at that on the G2 and I thought, well, that's going to be rubbish. No, it's, it's not. It's really and good. It's not. It's really good. Yeah, too, yeah. And the, the, real good. the headphones are really good too. And the built-in ones, I'm very impressed. Yeah, I like them. I just wish I could make them a little louder sometimes. Yeah, you need to stick an elastic band around your head so it pulls them in against your ears. Or just use your hands, but it's a bit difficult to yeah. fly like that. Get an old-fashioned uh, sweatband. I remember when um, South Africa brought in the rule that um, you could only use a mobile when driving if it was hands-free and um, what a lot of the taxi drivers did is they got a couple of rubber bands and strapped the phone to their ear <laughs> <laughs> I bet that went down well <laughs> Technically, that is hands-free. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this this particular leg from uh, fact to uh, what's the name of the airport? Um, it was to Lima Fox Drop Papa Bravo. I can't remember what the name of it was. Yes, yeah, I think that was the one. Um, it was uh, inspired by Therese Peltier. She was the um, she was the first ever uh, female pilot to actually fly an aircraft. I think it was back in 1908. Again, a lot of this stuff happened in 1908, 19 between 1908 and 1912. Yeah, she uh, she flew for 200 meters, um, and unfortunately, her partner, who had been teaching her to fly, died shortly afterwards, and uh, it put her off flying ever ever since, which uh, which is yeah quite sad really. Well, yeah, 200 meters is further than I got in my first flight. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> what which uh, aircraft was that in? Uh, that was in the A320. Oh right, nice. Stacked it straight into a building, I think. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is harder than it looked. <laughs> I remember on there. I'll tell you, from a historical point of view, what I did find interesting, and which I wasn't aware of until more recently, was mm -hmm. um, all, all the... Um, they're almost girls at their age that used to deliver the Spitfires and Hurricanes to the various airports from the factories. I mean... They must have been amazing pilots in all weather, all Very different talented, aircraft. Very yeah. talented, just, just stunning, really. My grandmother, um, she was uh, based near Poddington, which is where Santa Pod is now. Oh, yes. Uh, in Northampton, she was uh, delivering uh, Lancasters. Wow. What wow. I mean, that's, that's uh, just amazing. And, yeah. you know, they don't really get the credit they deserve, I don't think. No, I'd agree. And, and the thing was at the time they were saying, listen, you know, when you're training a new cruise, why don't we come in and tell you, you know, all the all the weirdness and all the quirks and the, the quirk, in, in yeah. the aircraft, and they wouldn't let them do it because they couldn't have a woman to teach in men, even if they were trainee pilots. Ridiculous. Crazy. Right. Because some of these girls would take things like Lancasters and Wellingtons, and they would do it solo. They wouldn't have a crew. <laughs> <It was nuts. laughs> Bloody hell. I think that's how she met my grandfather, because he was a um, chief mechanic. And I'm pretty sure she met him at Hendon. And she flew the aircraft in, and he met and fixed it up, and they ended up married, and here we are. Yeah, 
that makes you think. Imagine asking an uh, 18 year old nowadays to fly a Lancaster from the factory. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about my iPhone and my nails? <laughs> Probably find it hard to tie their shoelaces. <laughs> mind you, mind, yeah, mind you ask, ask any 18 year old, it doesn't have to be female. That's true. Not many. Uh, I'm not sure I could have done it at 18. Two, so. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. What Especially when you were flat around. Uh, Fingers in the squadron. <laughs> There'd be a lot of selfies. Oh yeah, it'd be all over social media. Yeah. <laughs> People are hanging out of aircraft and taking selfies. I, I've always said, if, if GoPros had been invented in like 1850, some of the YouTube videos nowadays would just be epic. <laughs> 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 the journey and I'm going to try and make the journey inverted <laughs> all the way <laughs> well I've done about 50% of it so far <laughs> I do that without trying <laughs> and of course the real aircraft wouldn't do it would it obviously put the, the spit upside down for too long and it would just all the oil would oh, yeah, well, start it with oil wouldn't it yeah yeah it did have a, a little um, device to to let it do it, didn't it, for a while? Some sort of... I think so. Yeah, the Germans already had that built in, so they could they could go inverted and... And the Messerschmitts, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think later Impressive. on, they were, look, they were looking about the pressurised oil, um, purely because of the threat of when the jets came. Hello. 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 Good evening. Who's that that's just joined us? Somewhere you hear that, that P thirty eight just rumbling somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to uh, it's hard to distinguish exactly where it's coming from, isn't it? It's like I can hear it. It's somewhere. <laughs> it's nearby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, flat spin, not good. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Throttle back. Head stick. Full right runner. Right I'm out. I'm fine. I'm not. This is not good. No, somebody's plowing straight to the ground. Whoa. <laughs> no, me. I'm going to a flat spin after a loop. <laughs> Trinity, were you following me? Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I got into a spin as well, but it was the you right as soon as I as soon as I topped.
I hope you guys know where you're going because I'm clueless. Oh yeah, no. we're all on the right track. As long as you maintain a heading of around about 170, I think you'll be fine. Yeah, I had the route on my, my the route planner, so I was had lines, but since I crashed, it took it away when I reloaded it. Have you ever tried to read the compass in the, in the Spitfire? It's <laughs> no, it's, it's next to impossible. Well, it is for me. Isn't it horizontal or something? It is. <laughs> it's it not is. even in the right. Oh dear. It's, and it's low down and it's very dark. Use your headlights. <laughs> Can't you? Surely in VR you must be able to like lean over it or something. Yeah, it doesn't quite make sense. It's a it's a strange um, device. Oh yeah, really? You've, you've got to manually set it. Oh right. And if you don't know what direction you're heading in, that's a bit difficult. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Yeah, it was done for point to point, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, when it first came out, the needle was half as bright as it is now. So it's even more difficult. Oh, Cripsy's in. Hello, Cripsy. We've got a third Spitfire with us. Nice. I don't see it. Is Cripsy, are you here? Somebody else is in a Spitfire as well, I'm sure. Yeah, there's one in front of me. For some reason, my autopilot's decided to uh, start playing games with me. smoothness of the new NOS scale on the, the, the foveated stuff, it's working beautifully. Which I'm VR headsets using... do you guys have? <laughs> Sorry James. Which uh, which VR headsets do you guys have? Is that uh, are they um... I've got the I've got the G two, the uh, the oh, okay. earlier version. And I think um, Mark's on the brand new one. Oh is that the um oh what's it called? The Aero, it's the Vario Aero. No, it's ah. not the Vario Aero, unfortunately. No, that's never going to happen for me. Hmm. It's quite, uh, quite a pricey piece of kit, isn't it, Alan? 2,400 if you're going to buy two base stations and controllers. Wow. Oh, two, nice. grand just, two grand just for the headset. But let me tell you, the clarity in it is like looking at your monitor. Really? Yeah, it's, it's stunning. Yeah, a friend of mine's got one and he says it's the equivalent of having two 55 inch, you know, high quality screens strapped to your face. <laughs> Bloody hell. Yeah, you must need some serious computing power to, to 
hey, be able to handle that. But... Well, as that, you need a decent PC and a decent graphics card. You know, it's um, graphics. Cards. It's graphics computing is less than the uh, Reverb G2. Oh. The reason being is because it's using its <laughs> different lenses. Um, it basically native resolution is almost the final resolution. Whereas with the reverb, it actually native resolution is quite huge, and uh, to to arrive at the 2160 by 2160 is, which is what you get per eye. We get the at the minute. Wow, that's uh, that's pretty impressive, really. Yeah, I, when I did my tests with the uh, Vajo Aero. I was getting the same performance um, as I was out of my reverb. That mm. was a G1 at the time, and uh, but with the improved graphics. Wow. How about the colors, Mark? Good colors and darks, okay? Better than the G2? Um, colors were good. Um, darks, um, I would say, probably very much similar, similar. To, to, to the G2, but I know a lot of people say it blacks aren't truly black, but I don't have a problem with the darks in the G2 at all. Not too bad. How about um, getting in and out of the sim? Reliable? Or? Yeah, fairly reliable. Um, it's it's quite comfortable, but I still rate the G2 as more comfortable. Okay. And mm -hmm. particularly now, because I wear glasses, yeah, oh, I, I, yeah. Went through, I went to VR Wave and got these lenses. They have absolutely transformed it, um, my VR flying. And also, with the new G2, you can take out a spacer. So my, so your eyes are closer to the lenses. So my FOV um, is quite wide. Huh. So the major drawback then, really, would be the, just the price of the, the Bayou Aero. Yeah, you're, you're paying for a new technology. Right. I think if HP are, are, are listening and based on the success of what they've got, once they bring a new one out, I think they'll listen and we'll get something very different from what's here now. Mm. But yeah, a bigger you price, know, it'll be double the price though. As technology moves away from Fresnel lenses, more to uh, spheric lenses and that type of thing, so the graphics can only improve. Just with the state of things in the world today, I just think it's going to slow down the supply and possibly technological development for a while. But they're still struggling to get chips for things. Yeah, well, Pimax have just issued... Oh, he's gone. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Pimax uh, just issued a note that... Uh, they, uh, they've had to find an alternative chip uh, for their 8KX. Um, and the drawback there is simply that uh, there's no AMD graphic card um, compatibility. What a hell. So if you're thinking of buying a Pimax 8KX and you've got an AMD card, you've got to be a bit careful. I've got issue an Xbox. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I just want it, I just want VR for the Xbox because it's got the grunt to run it. That'd be so yeah. nice. Does, it? Does Oculus not work yet? No, there's no VR for Xbox at all. Oh, right. um, there is for the PS5, but not yeah, for it. the Xbox. I tried the um, the PS5 VR actually. I was quite impressed. Yeah, they, to be fair, there is the first VR I've tried. Well, in June comes their um, PSVR 2 headset, their second gen headset. Um, and the resolution is not far behind the Reaver, that about 2000 oh, wow. by, I think, 2000, something like that. Is it a similar kind of price or is it? Oh no. It's a. Oh, huh? And Mulender <laughs> as well. Change your, change your, uh, run out of skill. 
James, you're um, upside down as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, you're right, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I was practicing flying on Australia, that's. Uh... Can you guys please take it, take it serious? <laughs> 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 the only answer I... This is serious. Wait till we start playing around. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, okay. And I have a. Uh, I always thought I was the crazy guy. <laughs> Question is, can I get it the right way around again without crashing? Yes, you can. I see. Hey, success. Great. Great. Put this on a photo. You will see it later on in the DC. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'll send you the um, I'll send you the highlights. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure you can actually do that with the uh, the real TBM though. <laughs> <Don't> try it. <laughs> I'm not sure my passengers would be too pleased. Might spill some uh, champagne in first class. Nice tunesy. <laughs> that was a beaut pass. I seem to fly better upside down than I do normally to <laughs> Born aerobatic pilot. Just so strange, I've got a thing about backwards stuff. I used to, when I was younger, maybe 25 years ago, I used to work at weekends alongside a guy who run fairground rides, you know? You'd oh take, yeah. Um, like this big spinning uh, G ball where you sit in and it throws you in three axis. Oh yeah, he those things, of, yeah. That... Those things. Yeah, he had one of those and a couple of small things and he had an unrideable bike, um, like a, a BMX that rode backwards. Oh, so when you, right. when you yep. turn the handlebars left, it went right? Yep, and yeah. I was <laughs> given that and told to learn that. And um, yeah, it gave me an affinity for riding stuff backwards. Wow. It's just a shame because I'm rubbish at normal flying. <laughs> For <laughs> forwards. <laughs> but I'm quite unreasonable upside down. Though. So nice. you're alright with the you're right with the uh, parallel parking then. Yeah. Just couldn't do the rest of the driving test. Yeah, I have to look in two <laughs> mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> when they visit, visit another uh, aerodrome uh, one of the two guys uh, do the whole flight uh, reverse <laughs> <laughs> he yeah, must have been thinking to himself I'm sure I yeah. saw some other gliders around here somewhere <laughs> <laughs> they were famous for this but uh, now they sail too old I'm not sure if they even live well Some of the gliding I've seen around the, the videos around the Alps looks just spectacular. I'd like to learn that on here. Hmm. I still don't know what all the beeps are about, so I'm, I'm I'll figure it out. Yeah, there's the, the, yeah, there's a few more clubs starting up on Discord for novice uh, glider pilots because you don't you don't want to be on the pro glider circuit because they are just super accurate, everything has to be bang on. Ah. But yeah, there's quite a few group flights in uh, like discus and stuff. You can stick some thermals in and, you know, just have a nice. A, a, a quite a relaxed tasking, you know, go from one end of Hawaii to the other just on thermals or on bridge lift and stuff. And That's cool. Well. I haven't actually tried the disc, the um, any well, discus or any of the gliders yet in, in Microsoft Flight Sim, but is it is, are the thermals modeled quite well or? Uh, the thermals are modelled really badly by oh, okay. the, by the sim, but they mm. have put some work in. And uh, if there's a big cloud with you know a tall cloud, there will be lift underneath them. Um, so you okay. can do it. You, you 
can do it without any add-ons, but there's a tool called Kinetic Assistant, which will allow you to pull in real live, sorry, real hotspots from around the world, and you'll get thermals under them. Uh, oh, nice. I think the latest version now has a, a, a training portion where you can actually see very faint spirals in the sky. So you can <laughs> actually see what cool. the thermals are. You know, if you're learning, it's, yeah, it's really useful. Nice uh, oh. By well. the way, just so that people don't fly straight past it, this is the next uh, stop point here, just on the left. Oh, thanks for the warning, James. <laughs> I've only just noticed it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Shoulder go. Yes, indeed. That's a busy airport. I'm not surprised you chose no aircraft. Oh. Uh, yes. No, that should be right. Yeah. No AI aircraft. That's a really busy one for me. This is my Nemesis airport. This is the one that usually, if I'm going to get a CTD, this will be where it is. Oh, I think I've run out of fuel. I've run out of fuel. No, 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 no. So there's another another airport slightly to the south of here as well. Um, doesn't really matter which one you land up because actually the important part is that in between the two airfields uh, there was a field where um, what was her name again? Therese Peltier, I think it was. Yeah, did first that first uh, flight. So that's the important bit, really. Well, I'm going to go and land in the field now. <laughs> yeah, if you'd rather land in the field, it's, uh, it's all, <laughs> all up to you. So are we landing here? Yes, yeah, we'll land here and then we'll take off and, and then, then it's to the final destination. But yeah, land here, wait for everybody to get on the ground and then uh, go from there. One minute, yeah, I'm landing. The wife is throwing things at me to add to the atmosphere. <laughs> Have you got the canopy open? Yep. She's just got a dead bird from the garden just thrown it at me. <laughs> bird strike. War is hell. Yep. <laughs> and the cat's just kindly brought it in for that. In all that excitement, I nearly forgot to put the landing gear down. <laughs> Is that what the aborted landing was? <laughs> yeah, that was the... I wonder what got that to, was. to two feet and then thought, oh, why is it <laughs> screaming at me? <laughs> Have we got a couple of minutes stop for some domestic violence? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still a TV stop. I'm just going to get to an angel on my shoulder. Tonight, because every land has been butter. Nice. Despite the birds. Yeah, all okay. sorts of things. Even the takeoffs have been reasonable. Okay, so I'm taking off from two six right. Um, not right now, but in a second, lining up on two six right. This is a busy airport. Yeah. 
just seen the name. Somebody's named themselves after their printer. <laughs> oh, Death yeah. Death Death Death. Death. Two, six, two six or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you see that? Yeah, yeah. In it's an the... airliner. <laughs> That's not an automatic naming, is it? No, it's not. That <laughs> can't be, surely. There'll be a, um, an HP around as well. <laughs> oh, I see, this is a Freddy Krueger as well. <laughs> Doesn't there sometimes when you have a, you have to do a change of account on Xbox and you, they, they, it gives you a name. It gives you some a weird double barrel name. Mine was Useless Porcupine, I think they gave me. <laughs> <laughs> a random name. Useless Amazing. Porcupine 300 and something. Yeah. Which I actually quite like. Right. Once okay. Again, just gonna... Everyone nearly ready? Yep. Excellent. Okay, so if everybody keeps their parking brake on and goes for full power, and then on three I'll say release the parking brake and then we can all go off together, how's that? Okay, Not one, for a Spitfire, you two. up on your nose. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One, two, three, parking brake's released. Uh oh, that's not good. Oh, dear, ground loop. <laughs> no, it's just donuts. This. <laughs> it's like you're nodding to the Queen, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Three bows and then stays no down. <laughs> Grand loop. That's the best landing I've done all evening, and it was the wrong airport. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Any port in a storm. At least it wasn't a field. <laughs> or the sea. <laughs> or the sea, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I forgot to stop by the shop and pick up a baguette on my uh, on my last stop <laughs> at that place. Anybody got any money for the piage? <laughs> <laughs> I 
remember those uh, airline food trays you used to get. I want one of those, <laughs> oh, that, yeah. fits on, want one of those that fits on top of the yolk. <laughs> Game of snacks. <laughs> With the little I metal trays what? that you can uh, heat up in the in the ovens. <laughs> yeah. I one of those plastic bibs for for two-year-olds that have the little tray hanging around them. You go oh. around your neck and they've got the tray. The oh, plastic the oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, if you're clever, you just put your dinner in them. And then eat it from there. Completely yeah. hands-free. Yeah, yeah, whatever you drop, you can just re-eat. <laughs> yeah, we call those grub gutters. <laughs> grub, <laughs> grub gutters. <laughs> <laughs> so handy. For, for VR, it's perfect. One of those and a sippy cup. <laughs> sippy cup. As long as it's something like spaghetti and you can, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think I think in VR the the most adventurous I got was grapes. I think. Anyone brave enough to try soup? <laughs> Lasagna. I've got a, uh, I always fly with a cup with uh, with a straw, a sealed cup with just a straw and through the top. Genius. Yeah, the really good idea. The problem with VR is you can't you can't drink coffee through a straw. And that, that, that's the one that um, ultimately got me off the G2, which is like I can't drink coffee properly when I'm flying. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah, because you can't lift the cup up, can you? Well, you can't. Well, you can, but then you. You, you bash your headset and then pour coffee down yourself. Look at the sky. <laughs> I don't see anybody in front of me. What's am I going too quick? Um, so yeah. Yeah. Okay, time to a loop. Yeah, you're, <laughs> about, yeah. you're, about, you're about 40 miles ahead of us. I'm uh, I'm recording this loop, Junji, so make it a nice one. <laughs> it's going to be a good one. I'd like to come out in front of you. See if you can um, drop straight into formation. <laughs> I've got guns on him. <laughs> Is he friendly? <laughs> I don't know. IFF. <laughs> Behind the leader. Nice. Bit of hair break. <laughs> oh, I can't beat that. That was awesome. <laughs> Don't expect it to be repeated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Impressed myself. Here comes the V30. <laughs> <laughs> Change the time of day now, so the sun's just starting to set online. Beautiful. I think my time of day was. I set on row 6:30 in the morning. Yeah, me too. You did say yeah, 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 I did. Yeah, yeah. No, you, you're absolutely right. I did. I just uh, changed uh, mine. That's all. Whoever's oh, well, right beside me. You're on my Xbox, your propellers aren't even going round, they're just static. <laughs> <laughs> Got some nice formation there, Chinzy. I'm trying my best. Although on my sim, you've got your nose gear down, but your main gear up. <laughs> Maybe that's yeah, the... Like uh, like that. That's it's the Spitfire. A it's a personal choice. <laughs> <laughs> some of them on my screen, some of them have just got like, it's like half out, not even full out, but no mm. full in either, just sort of half out. It's a unicycle aircraft. Nicely done. This plane's too slow. What have you got? What are you using? Uh, oh, 
bloody hell. The one that you had on the... the oh, the Bonanza. Yeah, the Bazaar. Yeah, I'm using that. Mm. Yeah, sorry there. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that pre Oh, yeah. I think that tops out at <laughs> around about 200 knots. Yeah, it does. You can't... I've been trying to plummet it towards the ground and try to get it faster, <laughs> but it just doesn't do it. <laughs> Chucking them P38s, but you don't have stress damage on. <laughs> or an incredibly high G tolerance. <laughs> uh, he, he, is, he is puffing some. <laughs> <laughs> I got, and I got a roll of speed tape, so I'll be alright. <laughs> yeah, speed tape and a hammer, that's all you need really with those. Well, pretty much, yeah. Some of the stories you used to get there with the, them over in um, North Africa, or the pictures you used to see of them s sat astride the uh, the engine, repairing it, you know, and then they just get in and fly it. <laughs> Very talented yeah. guys. Yeah, and shorts and a t shirt because the damn yeah. ran so hot. Crazy. Anyway, the fun little factoid for this leg this one's my favourite, by the way. This is. Uh, Raymond de la Roche. This is her leg, and she was nicknamed the Baroness. And I've got to tell you about this story. So it was, um, it was her first, her first time in an aircraft. Um, having been a passenger before a couple of times, but the first time at the controls. And, and she went to a. Uh, it was the Boissin Brothers. It was a very popular aircraft at the time. I think the Boissin, um, in at Chalon. And essentially, they let her taxi around in it. But it, because it was only one seat, they said, you know, taxi around in it, go around the field, and come back again. And what did she do? Full power, <laughs> lifted off, 300 yards flight, <laughs> and uh, yeah, got straight in the air, came back down again. And they were they were shouting instructions at her <laughs> from the ground. <laughs> what a bad I say. But she was the um, she was the first woman's first. Uh, Licensed pilot. She was the first person to get a license. The uh, first woman to get a license from the uh, the French Aviation that? Authority. That was. Let's have a look. 1908. Yeah, I was going to say 1908. Yeah. Yeah, it's 1910. 98th of March, 1910. That and that was the. Uh, that's what marks the uh, Aviation Week, Women in Aviation Week. So that was uh, the start at the start of the week. Pretty incredible, really. But 1910, before the First World War, and you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she got down and went to the nearest bloke and said, "Make me a sandwich." <laughs> <laughs> and well yeah. deserved too. Well deserved. She probably had more flying talent than her little finger than his lot. Yeah. Mm. Apparently, she was saying. She was a very I mean, attractive pilots, actress. Women pilots nowadays, and especially in um, on the large aircraft, the Airbuses and the 380s, and things like uh, Saudi Airways and um, El Al. All those are a lot of women pilots. Yeah. Yeah, the, the proportion is getting better, isn't it? No, it's been, yeah, it's a very large amount. Yeah, it's getting. Yeah, but this is, it's interesting. In Saudi Arabia, the women are not allowed to drive a car, but allowed to fly a big plane. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, big, yeah. big planes are safer though. <laughs> sure. Sure. Aviation is quite the same than traveling by car. <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend's uh, auntie, she's, well, the auntie and uncle are both captains of me. She's captain of me. Nice. I, I saw some stats about the um, RAF transport pilots, the female ones, and apparently they have 50% less taxiing pranks. The <laughs> because they just make less stupid decisions. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, uh, yeah, I can get this uh, A400 through there. Donk. Mm. Oh, James, I found out why that you're, when you were looking at me, you could see my nose wheel down. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's because my nose wheel was down. Oh, right. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I could be it. Last leg from the undercarriage down. <laughs> uh. Yeah, for 50 years! Yeah, it's only 52 years from that Mental. day. 62 was the black no, See, I think we should still do a... Um, I floated to the guys at, at, uh, at Turtle Beach about uh, designing a, a right flyer simulator, but they didn't seem too keen on it, to be honest. Just a big wooden stick. <laughs> Markup on that would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he flies for 11 seconds, that's on. Whatever it was. <laughs> 11 or 18, I can't remember. Something, Something like that, yeah. yeah I think. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make the suggestions to those that hold uh, these group flights of a, an ultralight flight at some point, please. It would be lovely. Ultralight? An ultralight, yeah. yeah. I, I really agree. think an ultralight flight. Somewhere really, I don't know, somewhere mountainous or, or something similar. Even the Isle of Wight's quite nice. I say. But an ultralight flight would be lovely. Nice, okay. Yeah, actually that's something I, I don't really utilise a lot on here, is, um, is the lighter aircraft. It, the views are just amazing, it's just fantastic mm. views. The top rudder 103 solo yeah. in VR is yeah. absolutely awe-inspiring. Yeah, it is. It's fantastic. As you did, Mark, when you put the when you put the uh, the wind up to 25 to 30 knots. <laughs> yeah, fun, a lot of fun. You need a lot of time. For this. <laughs> that was my 103 helicopter. Yeah, I do that with the gravel, 45 knots, and you can land backwards. Are there any helicopter enthusiasts among us at the moment, or...? Oh yes, definitely. Nice. Must be looking forward to the, um, the update then coming at the end of the year. Yeah, I'm doing that. The, the, um... Sorry, which are they called? What's the group called? Do you do the H14535? Oh, the high group. High performance. High group. Yeah, all of, their, all of their helis are great. Yeah, I'm a the big one fan of 145. Yeah, it's amazing. Even the 135 for a free aircraft is stunning. One four five and the military one four five a lot of fun. Nice. Do you have a, uh, a collective then at home? No, I will just use the yoke. It's fantastic. Oh right. It's, yeah, the, the velocity is absolutely perfect for helicopters. You just do it one-handed. And oh, right. You, okay. Your hands on your hands on the throttle for the uh, um, for hands with the circlet and the collective on the throttle is is fine. Absolutely nothing nothing wrong with it at all. Nice. It's, 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 I've, I've not taken the velocity off the desk since the day I've got it, and I had, I've got a HOTAS sitting there that doesn't get used. Yeah, even on the HOTAS, when they got that working, it was like, what? How is this working? I'm actually yeah. flying. I'm, I'm, yeah. flying I'm flying backwards into a building, but I am flying. Yeah, without <laughs> airlines at first, the, the control algorithm they've got are absolutely brilliant. I mean, it's not... You go with airlines and you choose something like the Bell or the... Um, the UH-1, and it's really difficult to fly, more like a helicopter. Um, but for a fun flight and to get into helicopter stuff, any of the height grouped aircraft are really good. Nice. That's one thing we're missing on the Xbox is help. Yeah. The marketplace yeah, is a little bit smaller on the Xbox, isn't it? Or right, there's just less, I suppose, less free third-party add-ons. Yeah, only only through the marketplace. Mm. Yeah, but that's starting to that's starting to ramp up now. I think Hyper have got a good chance of getting affiliated um, into the marketplace. Obviously, with the the lack of an external program like Airland to run it, I think they've got a really good chance. I uh, I definitely.
there's this water you flew over there. Like a canal. Yeah, it's a canal. It's got trees in it though. <laughs> so a canal of trees. Head, I'm terrified of hitting a pylon. And there was a pylon. This is a very relaxed end to a terrible week, so thank you, James. Hey, more than welcome, no, it's, uh, it's been really good, actually, hasn't it, this fight? This is great, yes, yeah, lovely. I've nice. got some brilliant shots as well of everybody in formation, in a big V, and, and a few people coming past at, well, what seemed like Mach 3 from my perspective. <laughs> yeah, any excuse for me to get in the spit? Uh, wow, I just love it in VR. Absolutely. Yeah, it's probably the best aircraft for me. You in a hooligan comes out. You'll have to send me the, the link to the specific one that you've got, um, Mark, so that I can download it and, and see it properly next time on the, on the stream. Yeah, it's... Um, yeah, you've got it, to have it in your hangar. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a must Flying have, Irons. It? It's in the marketplace, PC and Xbox. Um, Flying Iron Spitfire Mark 9. Oh, uh, okay. I'll stick, I'll, I'll stick a link in the uh, chat if you want to get it direct. Oh, on. nice one, okay. And you do get the clipped wing version with that as well. Oh, really? You do. Yeah, and a bunch of liveries too. Nice. Nice. Are we Can landing we? here? Yes, this is the destination. So, um, just to double check, it's Ikea code Lima Foxtrot Oscar Kilo. And it looks like the runway is pretty much in line with us. Yeah, one zero. Yeah, straight on. Lovely I stuff. Just a bit of fire if I... Ooh, I don't know. I want to say, I want to say... 25 quid? Yeah, yeah. probably yeah, 29 or 30 pounds. Yeah, 25 yeah. or 30 pounds. Yeah, I think you're, you're 25 to 30 pounds. Oh, well, superbly, but you've definitely got to land it and you've got to take it off and concentrate. Oh, oh, the best. That London. was butter. Best landed. I've no landed upside down in the river. <laughs> and I've no bounced in the runway. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Oh, this that's beautiful. This is a lucky server. Apart from the spiral death dive. Hand, I'm going to do this one properly. <laughs> That's a, um, a triple seven taxiing around with its tail on the floor next to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need to get the PA thirty eight as well. It's it's uh, another must have, I think, in the collection. Lovely stuff. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks very much, everybody, for, for attending. It's been it's been yeah really relaxing as um, as you said. Yeah, well, thanks, thanks very much, right. James. Much appreciated it. And I'm hoping yeah, I'm hoping that the uh, the next one we can do uh, not 
the coming weekend, but the one after. So I'm hoping to make this a, a, a bi-weekly event. Um, and hope, hopefully next time I'll have a challenge for you where you can win a headset. So that'll be the next uh, the next event. And that'll be... Let me just try and get you the date for that one. Uh, looking at it, probably be probably the 27th. Sunday the 27th. Yeah, that works. So we can aim for then. Yeah, yeah sure. Oh, obviously, feel feel free to stick around and have a have a few landings, takeoff circuits, or a little bit of formation between you, if you'd like. I might just stick around for another couple of minutes. Well, yeah. Have a bit my of fun. dinner's ready, so I'm gonna go off. Thank you very much, James. Thanks, everybody. Really appreciated it. Catch you next time. Great yeah, to have you on, Mark. Thanks okay. very much. Well, B Weekly is, uh, is, is very good because uh, on the other weekends I have a flight, always a planned flight with another community. Oh, yeah, yeah, perfect. It's, um, it seems like a